have a few secrets that aren't really secrets. They just took me a long time to learn about the extended events wizards in Management Studio. We've had wizards or a GUI for extended events since SQL Server 2014, and we find them in the management folder under extended events. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on sessions here. And when I right click on sessions, something a little interesting happens. I get two different options. One of them says new session wizard, and one of them says new session dot, dot, dot. These are both actually wizards. One of them just calls itself a wizard. And the thing is, I think it's actually just as hard to use but it doesn't have all of the options that just plain old new session dot, dot, dot has. So if you're gonna go to the trouble to learn extended events and use this, I think just don't mess around with this one that calls itself a wizard. Use the one that just says new session. It is still a wizard, but it, it lets you do everything and you still get things like templates, right? There's not, really a downside that I found in just using plain old new session. So that first hurdle is what do I even use? I'm gonna go ahead and, and do what I recommend, which is just say, I wanna use new session. And for this session, we are gonna name it tuning because what we're gonna do is use the tuning template. This is the equivalent to the ye old SQL Server profiler tuning template and it will auto populate a few events for us. So I'm gonna say, use this template. And now when I go to events, I have three events already selected for me, RPC completed, SP statement completed and SQL batch completed. So I'm gonna click configure to set a filter for those events, because in this case, let's say I just wanna trace my session ID. I don't wanna trace everything. I wanna just trace a specific session. And let's check what my session ID is. I am currently session ID 62. So what I used to do, this secret is to me, I thought what I needed to do was click on one event and then add my filter in on the filter tab and then click on another event and add another filter and then click on another. It's actually easier than this. It took me, took me about a year, I'll admit, to figure this out. I can hold down shift and select all of these events. And then on the filter tab, note I have a little filter column right here. You can watch that as I go. I'm gonna go down and select SQL Server session ID. Now everything gets angry because I haven't filled it out yet. And I've already of course forgotten what I'm looking for. I'm looking for 62 there. And I can put in the value of 62, maybe actually typing it. And then I can click elsewhere and now everything's gone back to check marks. This secret also works for other things. Like if I click on my actions tab, these are represented by that little, you know, like the lightning bolt is our actions and our filter has the funnel. I can, let's, if I wanted like, uh, I'm just gonna scroll down and collect something kind of random here. Let's say I wanted the SQL text for all of them. Note how since they're all selected, the count went up to five. This can save you a lot of times. The more events you have, the more time it will save you. I think it's a really handy tip. I'm gonna cancel out of here, but in the script, there's more instructions for if you want to uh, save the script and then test it out. Another problem I've had with the extended events wizard is I've wanted to test something out on my little test system. I'm completely up to date and I've read a blog post about an event and I can't find it in the wizard. So one thing that's happened with recently is for the query thread profile event, which we got recently. So I'm gonna go and say new session. And this time I'm not gonna use a template. I'm gonna leave template blank. I'm just gonna go to events because I'm looking for this special event and I type in its name just as I found it. And there's, there's nothing in the list here, right? This is just empty. What's up? Well, okay, I've got a drop down here. I'm gonna say, don't just look at the event names, look at everything. But that doesn't fix it easier either. 
Well, here's what I learned. These little carrot things are drop down menus. I had thought this was just like a little sorting arrow for like alphabetical reverse sorting of results. No, this is actually a menu. If you click on this little drop down next to channel and you have to click in the exact right place, you now see that there are these different channel options and there's a whole category of things that isn't shown by default that is the debug channel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my little menu back and check off debug and voila, <laughs> my event appears. It was just in a channel that didn't show up by default and now I can add the event and configure it. Let's actually highlight it and then add the event and I can configure it as normal. Just one note, this query thread profile event generates a lot of events, it's super verbose. I was testing this out on, you know, purely dedicated test environment and I was quickly overwhelmed at the amount of trace data I generated. So, you know, I'm not, there is a reason it's in <laughs> that debug channel, but you know, sometimes we do wanna test things out and debug things. It's, you know, it's, you wanna know that they're there and I just had no idea how to <laughs> get to them and to use them for a while. So those are the two things that have really uh, tripped me up in extended events, but you can skip past them and become a pro right away.